morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to open up this morning with a little prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day you've given us to come together and worship in your precious name. And uh, Father God, just ask that you come on the scene this morning and bless each one here and forgive us of our sins and just touch your heart, Father God, and be with each one. You said, your word said you never leave us or forsake us. We believe your word. And we ask, Father God, that you bless the bride around the world and the bride here at home this morning. And bless those that couldn't be here today with the colds and, the, and all the pollen that's going on and affecting my wife's and home sick and, and, the, and the rest of them is not here today. Just bless them and be with them and whatever's holding hold them back or hindering them, Father God. We know your word will move them on. And so we just ask you to touch and bless them in a special way and especially be with Brother Dean this morning as he uh, went under the surgery. We're calling for a good report, Father God. We've asked it. We've asked it in your name. Come make your word with it, Lord. And we expect to hear a good report from Brother Dean and Bless Sister Peggy and just lift her up and give them your faith. And be with Brother Gary and Brother Danny and, and uh, Sister Beck is there down there with uh, Sister Peggy. And just bless their fellowship with one another. And be with them, Lord, and with joyous thoughts on their heart as only the Word can bring. And we ask you to be with Brother Wade and, yeah. and Sister June and Brother Josh. As, I don't know if they've made it back or not yet, Lord, but we call for them to come back home safely. And I believe they'll be here. And I just ask you to bless this little church here today, Father God, that you send down the Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord, and bless your word as it comes forth. Because, Lord, there ain't no other place to be today for me on the face of this earth than right here to hear your precious word that you told me to come in here. And, Lord, nothing in this life of mine has ever meant anything more to me than this word that you brought from this little wooden building here and from my precious brother. And I ask, Lord, that you just bless us here today and bless our fellowship. Yes. Don't let us say anything or do anything to harm or hinder anybody. You just come on the scene now and bless your word. And we ask these things and have your way with us, Father God. Just take all the way with us. Let these vessels be yours that you created, Father God. You just claim them. And I ask it in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Uh, I had a little thought last night. I was thinking about several things and all the things that uh, Brother Dale's been preaching on and the wonderful things that Brother Wade has been doing here in Sunday school this morning uh, in the mornings about the, the seals and all. And, and he's taking it so slow and I love that. And uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's been the height of my visitation here at this church in Lula is what's coming forth this day. Uh, you can see the progression of the word. It's the same word, but the revelation is greater. It's got to be greater, Brother Ray, because what we got here is not getting it done. And so it's just coming more and more. Uh, before I forget, it's on my mind. We're going to talk about the six stages or the six raptures in the Bible this morning a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to keep you long. And uh, I, I just hope that we all can... Open up, and I, I would say to all of you here, I, I, I've been doing something lately, and it's really helping me a lot, is to take Brother Dale's seals that he preached in 83, and I've been going over and listening to him. And I tried to listen to him a couple times before, and I'm telling you, I just really didn't understand them. And uh, I, of course, went listening to Brother uh, Random seals, and, and you got to have a good foundation before you can really understand, and then you go back to Brother Dale's, and listen to what he's brought. It's just so simple. Uh, and each of those seals, and I would I would say to all of you that if you'll just take the time, sit down and just listen to his seals that he preached in 83 will help us a lot. When Brother Wade comes out and gets into the first seal, second seal, and third seal, you'll have a lot better understanding and you'll be more prepared because Scripture says we gotta study and show ourselves approved. So, I mean, we can stand here and shout we're message all day long, but there ain't one way to become message people that I know of, and that's to get into this right here. Amen. The little book. We got to eat it. All right. And uh, that's all we can do. So let's start with uh, the six raptures that they're talking about. It's in the Bible. This is, a, this is actually an article from the Message Chronicle that I picked it up last night. And I, I had a thought. God woke me up the other morning and uh, gave me a little thought. Uh, 
actually I was doing what my pastor had told me to do. He said, you get woke up in the middle of the night, so just pray for me. Mm -hmm. That will put you back to sleep every time. Well, it's gotten where you don't do that. And uh, that's a good thing because I get to pray for everybody here when that happens. I don't. Mm -hmm. I try not to leave a name out. And if I do, uh, forgive me. I, I get it the next time. So uh, I believe that's what we got to do as brothers and sisters in here because there's a couple of things that's holding the church off to, to me the way I see it. And part of it is our little things that we have, mm -hmm. our denominations that we have with each other that we shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. We should just totally love each other and be kind to one another. And, and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, for us to get to that stage, we have to be at that stage so the seals can come on and do their job for this flesh. And then we'd be out of here. But anyway, uh, I believe that we all should, first of all, love one another, be kind to one another. And that's that's my heart to all of you here this morning because I look at the faces I hear that morning looking at me and one of you that I don't love and I can honestly say it and I, I don't know you but I know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you, who you are and where you come from. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's, let me get on into this because I don't want to go that direction. I want to get into these, these raptures. I found it an interesting article so I said well Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit, and of course I got to the fifth rapture, and I got to put my little message back in here that the Lord woke me up the other morning and gave me, and I sat there, and I, you know, sometimes you know you're sitting there talking, and you, and the, the Lord's talking to me, and He's, He'll, uh, I'll be praying for one of y'all here in the church, and all of a sudden I'll just start going off, and I'll start, He'll start giving me stuff to talk, or just a sermon, I guess, is, I don't know, it's not a sermon, I he just tells me what he wants me to say a lot of times. And I'll sit there and I'll, I'll think about it and I'll start saying it. And then all of a sudden I look up and 45 minutes on the clock is gone and I think I'm awake but I'm, I know I must be dreaming it or something because it just keeps coming. I said, boy, where, where's my pen and piece of paper? I need to write that down or I need a, uh, you know, a recorder to catch all that. Because it's, it's so wonderful how he just comes in and just sews it right up, ties it right up. And then I try to get up and repeat it, and I mess it all up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's a wonderful thing when that happens. And I believe the Lord is here. Um, we had a good time yesterday over there at the uh, assisted living home. Uh, heard some good singing. Uh, the piano was a little bit off tune. Uh, when, when she was in A flat, uh, finally a brother on the guitar with me, he said, Don, we've got to go on down to see. She's, she's about that far off with it. I'm watching her hands. And, and that was about true. So, you know, but like Brother Joe always says, Lord will provide. And he did. We had a wonderful time. Uh, but anyway, let me get on into this because I'll be talking all day long and not getting to what I'm supposed to be getting to. Uh, first of all, I want to go to any Bibles. Uh, go to Genesis uh, 5.24. And the first rapture that we know of there is Enoch. And we're just going to read a little scripture there for a few minutes, and then I'm going to move on to the other ones, each one. I was going to pull up some stuff on Brother Brown, but my computer has been down at the house, and it's had a lot of little issues, and Brother Josh has been trying to help me out with it. Uh, but I was not able to pull up any of his quotes, so this this what I'm bringing is is, is from Brother Branham, so we're all good with that, right? Because right. I like to, we have an edge of prophet come and told us these things or else we wouldn't understand them. So anyway, let's go to Genesis 5.24 and let's see. I brought my big letter Bible so I could see a little bit this morning. Anyway, and he not walk with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, we know that what happened right there, he was so one with God that he just took him out of here. And I want to go to the next one, which was Elijah, was number two, 2 Kings 2.11. Enoch, the pyramid builder. <laughs> Should 
Mark did. It would have helped me out a little bit. Uh, okay. 2 Kings 2.11. <clears throat> and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and Elijah saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took up for he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. And he went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that he fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went over. Amen. We know what that means. <clears throat> that was a carrying away. That's what the rapture is, is the carrying away of a person to another place or sphere of existence. Uh, the archaic part definition of it is the act of carrying off. Uh, the third Elijah, or the third rapture, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew 27, 50, 53. The Old Testament saints, Matthew 27, 50 through 53, I believe is what I'm going to read. Everybody ready? <clears throat> Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after the resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, last night I was reading that and I didn't know that when the, when, when he he cried out the earthquake and knew about the veil being rent, that's theirs, but it, I never caught it that those graves were cracked and those saints came out that time that's right uh -huh. and I, I didn't I was sitting there looking at that and I said that's that's special right there that's wonderful because that's going to happen with us that's, that's coming it's already been it's already been written so it's going to happen the next one the fourth rapture was Jesus Christ in the book of Acts one Nine through eleven. <clears throat> Acts one, nine and eleven. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by, by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I, I see myself there doing that. I, I know there's many times that my daddy come to me about a lot of things. And that's what we're talking about here. Headship. Mm -hmm. Having correct headship. I remember a lot of times my daddy telling me a lot of things to go do things and, and me not do it. Mm -hmm. And I can see me and my brother Tommy <laughs> standing there gazing off somewhere, not doing what we're told. 
<laughs> and then come it up, upside the head, say, go do what I told you. Just simply go do what I told you. And that's what God does with us. And sometimes, you know, uh, I, I can testify to myself that uh, I am hard-headed, and the Lord has got my attention many times. And uh, he has a way about, you know, jerking your chain a little bit. It's, uh, it hasn't always, uh, I, I think, that I know a lot of times that he don't just up and say, now you need to go on up there and do what I told you to. He's not going to do that. He's going to scream it. Go do what I told you to. And that's what he's telling us today. Come hear the word. Be at your post of duty. Whatever it is in this church. Because you never know when you're not here. There's a battle getting here every day. And doing what the Lord tells you to do is simple. But it's a hard battle because uh, so many times in the mornings now, this morning I knew I was going to have to be here and I, I would have beat the doors down at 6 o'clock this morning. And I'm not early riser, folks. But when I know that I've got to be here and I've been asked to be here, I'm going to be here. Do my part. And I uh, hope I don't bore you with none of this. I, I've seen this and and I thought to myself, I said, what a, what a wonderful thing just to talk about in a Sunday school class is a rapture. Um, and doing what we're told by his word, that's grace. Because you can understand grace. I was telling a guy the other day about talking to a real hard uh, Trinitarian there, theologian. This guy's a theologian. He's theologian to the core. And... Um, I asked him to explain to me why they had two baptisms in the Bible, the difference between them. He was so smart. I said, you, you explained it to me. Why did Jesus say do it this way here? And why did after the baptism of the Holy Ghost came and the word had done put in, been put in these people for three and a half years, why did they come out and say it this way? And they also underlined it to me in big letters standing out flashing lights if you don't do it this way you can't get there and he just looked at me he says well this teaches me this way and I'm going to stay there I said okay you've been told and that's a scary thing when you tell people and they tell you that because you know one day you're going to see them again and that's being disobedient that's sitting there and taking whatever they throw out there to you I would want to know if something is different in this Bible. I, I mean, you got to know. We got to know. And like I said, thank God He sent us a prophet to give us these answers to these things. Because I pretty much, folks, I tell y'all something. I pretty much, in my heart, I'd given up on the Baptist and the Methodist. I at least could look at a Jew and say they believe in one God. That's all there is. There's other mythical gods out there in comic books and things, but there's only one God, the Creator. Didn't know much, didn't know hardly anything about this guy called Jesus Christ, but I did understand one God, that part of it, which was only a part. It wasn't all of it, by far. Anyway, that's the fourth rapture. The fifth rapture, uh, I want to start out right here and I want to do a little reading on this uh, we'll go back actually to the fourth rapture uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the fifth one I'm going to read some of this right here uh, just for a minute the fifth rapture is that which is spoken of in Thessalonians 1 4 16 and 1 Corinthians 15 51 and concerns the catching away of the true bride believing Christians who had received the message that God sent to them from the day of Pentecost through the contents of the seven church ages until today. Now, that's a body of believers is composed of the saints who have died during the Ephesian, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardesian, Philadelphia, and the Laodicean church ages with the living saints that are still alive in our age, all these saints are bound to meet the Lord 
I'm, I'm having to strain a little bit to read this because the writing is so small. Uh, comes the rapture time. These are the dead in Christ, which shall first come, then which are alive and remain, shall be called up together with them in the clouds of many in the air. Now, how, how do we get there in this filth in this filth rapture, which is the bride of Jesus Christ? First of all, we already know, just like it just said, there was a group come through these church ages. All of them come through the seven church ages. All of us did. And I want to go back to Malachi 4. And I'm just going to touch on it in a minute and move on to the, the scriptures that uh, that's going to bring us to this rapture. Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I will send you. He talked to me, Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. We all know that that's a promise, the Old Testament, the New Testament, that he's going to do that. So that's got to be done. Now, we all know the part that's John the Baptist and where the prophet fits in, the Revelation 10, 7 guy. We know who he is. Okay? Now, I want to move up to Revelations 10, 7. We'll just hold this thought there just for a second. All of you read it with me because these are... Very important. But in the days of the voice of seven angels, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God, one mystery shall be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now, we know that was Brother Brown. Amen. The Lord working in Brother Brown on the fourth coming of Elijah. Mm -hmm. I know that. Okay. Now, the promise was made there in Malachi. Mm -hmm. Revelations 10, 7 has happened. It's already happened. Now we get to the other part, Luke 17, 30. I'm sure you all know it. But I still love reading it. Actually, Luke 17, 31 kind of gets your attention. But Luke 17, 30... Actually, let's go to Luke 17, 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained and brimstones from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, you can look today and you can't see what's out there. I really ain't against those people out there. They just don't know any better, y'all. They really don't. Uh, some, I, it's, it's always sad in my heart that this, this message is not for everybody. It's only for a small catching away of people. And it, it's, it's a sad thing to see. That's why we all must be kind uh, as we, and, you know, to these people because they're not called. I mean, you can go through Walmart, you can sit there and watch them come in our store every day, and I sit there and talk to them, and I'll say, Lord bless them when they walk out the door, because they're keeping us going. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, this is like this. I mean, he knew that they all wouldn't accept it, mm -hmm. but it, it, it is a very small catch in the way, and we're a very select, <coughs> blessed group of people, and it really kind of hurts my heart when I sometimes uh, get frustrated with the cares of life or being at the shop, see things that happen, see them little spirits start jumping like little monkeys between right. trees and one of them lands on your shoulder and you don't brush your mouth right quick, he'll make you do things. Right. And then something will stop you and say, hey, you get rid of that. Go right on in there and come back and apologize. Right. And that's happened. 
It does happen to me. And I'm sitting there and I'm so ashamed. Mm -hmm. One day I walked out there and I said something I shouldn't have said. And I knew it. I knew it was wrong. It's been something that the devil been beating on me about two weeks about. And I said, why are you beating on me? I shouldn't be letting this happen. If I'm a child of God, he's already been whooped. I don't know what my problem is. My problem is a lack of faith mm -hmm. and a lack of word. I've got to get rid of this. Right. This ain't right. It don't fit. The shoe's too tight. Blister's on my feet, and it's hurting. Okay? So, I mean, it happened that quick. And it almost, there was an employee of mine standing there when I did it. And as soon as it happened, I said something I shouldn't have said. And the next thing that happened, he was looking me straight in the eye. And he was one of them little doubting demons. But he saw something. I know he did, because... I started crying. I just my tears started running down my eyes. I said, "I'm so ashamed." You forgive me. Mm -hmm. You forgive me for what I just said. That was wrong. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go ask the Lord to forgive me. Mm -hmm. And He told me, he "said You don't have to ask me." I said, "Yes, I do." Mm -hmm. That's where you're wrong. I do have to ask you. Right. And I went in, and of course, I asked the Lord to forgive me. And it burned me a while, a good while. Until these things that we have to grow. Mm -hmm. And we have to know not to do these things because we're a special group of people. By his grace, I mean, I know that I was born in sin. I know who I am. I look this man in the mirror. I ain't no goody two shoes, folks. But it's his word that says I am. Amen. Now, I'd lot rather hold on to God's word than I had to hold on to this vanity thing. Mm -hmm. Because God's word. I mean, if I had a choice of standing on heaven, standing on earth, or standing on God's word for eternity, y'all know what I'm going to stand on? That word. His word. Because that's the only thing that's going to hold up. So, I'll take his word. He said it about me. And so I'm going to believe what he said. Because I know who I am. I'm a failure waiting to happen every day I wake up. So, you know, we all must just be proud of who we are and the word we've heard. If you didn't hear another word today, what would you do? What would you do? What if I come in here and shut this church down, cut Brother Dale, Brother Wade, and all the other people here and scattered us around? What would you do? Have you remembered enough? We, we moved all the way from California to come here because of the word. The Lord brought you. Do. Amen. That's right. I was talking to uh, Brother Mark. I mean, you stop and think it ain't no accident, folks. He's seen this before the foundation of the world, what he was going to have to do to get us here. Right. All of us here this day. We're a special group of people. If God be for you, who can be against you? That's the, that's the way you've got to be. Otherwise, we're still going to be going to church. I'm for getting out of here. Mm -hmm. And I know, I'll tell you all right now, I know I'm not ready. But I ask the Lord, whatever it takes, you have to drag me down the street to get me ready, hook me up right. today. Because nothing else matters. Right. Okay. We're in the fifth. Now, we're Luke 17, 30, and this is two scriptures that just make my day. I love them. I really do. Is it time? Let me finish this. Okay. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.16. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to stay with the scriptures that I got and finish this. Y'all forgive me. First Thessalonians 4. Uh, 4 16. There ain't no 4. 1 oh, oh. Thessalonians 4. 16. <laughs> well, well, we'll start at 15. Well, let's go to 14. <clears throat> and then I'm going I'm to hit this right quick. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do we? Amen. 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 Here, amen. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by word of the Lord, that we which 
are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, or the voice of an archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, me, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, that's the fifth one, and I'm on, I, that's his promise, his word, that's my scripture. Y'all ever ask what's well, my scripture? That's my scripture. I believe that. With all my heart. He showed me that. That brought a circle. Now, the sixth rapture is the two witnesses, which are Moses and Elijah. We're not going to have time to read it because that, that clock's set ahead. Is it set ahead? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this is the two witnesses. And there will be three signs that come in the fifth rapture. First of all, it will be the Lord himself shall shout is one. Well, the voice is two. And the, the voice of an archangel. And the third is the trump that he will be. So I hope that we learned something this morning about the raptures. There's six of them. And we all got a meeting. Joe. Uh, we're going to continue the people in Japan in prayer and yes. the earthquake and tsunami and uh, a tsunami travels so fast like 600 miles an hour and it hit California too Yeah. and I told them yesterday that nothing wrong they probably didn't understand what I was saying but I said it, all the things happening in the world he said it's later than you think Yes. Yeah. we're giving them a message but they don't know what we're giving them right. <laughs> I'll tell you all this the other morning I told Monday Brother Mark.